coaching five coaching Naka. You know, we know we're fighting a, a good guy. You know, Team Benavides doesn't uh, run from nobody. who we'll fight anybody, you know. Uh, that's, that's boxing, you know. At the end of the day, we gave the people a good fight. Everybody was excited. Uh, we're going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to continue working hard. And uh, we're going to come back again and, and keep uh, doing what we're doing. When I was a casual, I thought as a casual, I spoke like a casual, and I looked at boxing like a casual. But when I became a hardcore, I put away all those casual things. This is Michael Rogers, and welcome to Bodywork Boxing. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Bodywork Boxing. I want to talk about Ryu Venezuela and the upset defeat that he suffered last night at the hands of De La Santos. Now, normally when these fights go on, I normally have my notepad ready and, you know, I'm taking my notes and I'm scoring these fights. You know, I was kind of on the edge before the fight as to whether or not I was going to actually uh, watch the fight. But I started watching some of the preliminaries and I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to watch this fight. You know, no dogs in any of the rates. In any of them races last night, I had no dogs in any of them races, right? But I actually, the first round started, and I saw something immediately. Somebody was like, hey, you gonna go ahead and score this fight? I said, ah, I don't think my, I don't think I need my notepad for this one. I didn't see, I, I didn't see that. I didn't even see it going out of the second round. I really didn't. You know, but let's get into it. What I saw was Rival Venezuela, a guy that was being hyped up in the boxing community by, you know, a group of people for whatever reason, you know. And that's what I say that the, the dangers of, you know, just jumping behind some of these fighters, even when they up and coming. Let's just say like a Frank Martin, just jumping full flares behind and saying, oh man, he's just a world class. No, this is why they actually have to get in there and fight these fights. They have to get these little, they have to go against these buried opponents, just like Gary Antoine Russell going against Bartholomew that's taller with a longer reach, has power, can box Cuban style. They have to actually get inside the ring. Brandon Lee faced some adversity. He was able to overcome adversity university. And for me, I was like, man, I like Ryu. But what I'm starting to actually see, and I don't blame Ryu. He's a developing fighter and he's a fledgling fighter. He's actually growing, you know, he's trying to build his brand, you know. I don't blame Ryu. You know who I blame? Jose Benavidez Sr. How long are you gonna let this man just run around, man, like a kid in the candy store? You know, we actually gotta start actually looking at Cause when I've been looking at it for one, I'm not high on Jose Benavidez, the Mexican monster or whatever they wanna call him. The red bandana red the red monster, the red bandana, El Bandana Roja. I'm not I'm not high on him. He's very offensive when you look at him. Jose Benavidez. David Benavidez. I was talking about the bigger one is David Benavidez. I'm not high on that one. I used to, I was kind of high on Jose Benavidez, but I know that you need your legs in boxing. And he got shot in the leg, but he put on one of the best boxing rounds a boxer have ever laid down on a track against Bud Crawford, arguably one of the best boxers in the game. Bud just happened to have extra gears and extra tools that he can go back in the toolbox and actually make adjustments and actually got that man out the way. But when I actually look at Jose Benavidez Sr., I see all kind of red flags. I do.
because when I look at his fighters, his fighters are all offensively gifted. And what I saw in this fight last night was Ryu saw that he actually caught De Los Santos at one point in time. Right? They called it a knockdown. They ruled it a knockdown. Right? At that point in time, Ryu had already convinced himself in his mind that no matter what, he was going to try to hit this guy with his best shot. He was going to actually put everything, all the mustard he could gather behind every shot. And he was going to try to get that boy out the way. And I said, man, this is going to end so ugly. I didn't even really want to watch it. When we look at David Benavidez, no, when we look at, yeah, David Benavidez. When we look at him against Kyron Davis, even though he was able to stop Kyron Davis, even though that was a stoppage, I actually saw the success that Kyron Davis actually had being a smaller actually he's a 154 pounder and truth be told david benavidez is a 175 pounder he's always overweight always struggling with suppressing the weight to actually make 168 so well 160 but i am disappointed in senior Ryu was a very offensively gifted fighter. It was all this hype. Oh man, he wants tank. Just like when Frank Martin, oh man, he wants tank. I don't know what has to happen in order for people to actually see that, man. These guys got to be battle tested, man. These guys got to get in. And what I saw was once Ryu got out the first round, I didn't see him make any adjustment. It was just, I'm going to catch him. I'm going to catch this little dude one time and it's going to be out. And he never was able to catch him. Why? Dude, able to know, dude knew how to put his combinations together. He was swifter on the feet. He was more linear. Why you has to wind up? And I was like, I was saying that when I saw a couple, I said, man, he got some power. But when you're dealing with the elite, man, hey, some of them can accept that power. And they like, oh, man, you're going to get yours off, but, hey, I'm going to get mine off. And when I get mine off, it's going to be a wrap. I'm putting I'm putting uh, Senior in the hot seat. You know, I get tired of actually hearing him going around talking about how everybody's stuck in his son. His son was irresponsible and losing his belts. He's riding off of the fame and the notoriety and the narrative that one day him and Canelo Alvarez are going to see each other and that he can actually beat Canelo Alvarez. Now, the Alvarez is, is using the fact that he's not going to face any other Mexican boxers to avoid David Benavidez for whatever reason. But I think Canelo can actually beat him. But I blame Senior. I blame Jose Benavidez Senior. He didn't have any adjustments. I don't know how in the world they was going to allow a guy that was 15-1 and one with 14 knockouts to get in the ring with Ryu and think that everything was gonna be okay we can actually tell like when Cruz fought that dude Rivera or whatever I ain't even care to jot down his name when I saw that he only had 12 knockouts out of like close to 30 fights he's not he wasn't a threat like some of these guys when you have offensively gifted fighters and you see a match with somebody that has like a 10 to 12 percent knockout ratio or is less than 50 percent they are not in there to lose so this was a setup. It's the same thing. They try to do that. I see that over there on PBC. They actually put people in the ring. They give people short notices because we actually had Ricardo Nunez on a short notice when Abner Marrez pulled out against Tank. We also had Isaac Cruz on a short notice when he was supposed to fight Roley. Had Tank underestimated either one of them guys or just thought, oh man, I'm just going to get mine off and he didn't actually box and actually demonstrate his skills. He would have been one of them. We always see these short notice fights not ending up right for these fighters. But I blame Jose Benavidez Sr. Much like we talking about Reynoso. Much like, hey, everybody was trying to put uh, my, uh, Robert Garcia on the high seat after AJ Law. You know, we got to actually, people have Bo Mac on the grill. You know, we got to actually start and then you, we got to start holding these trainers accountable. Bo Mac doing the same thing that Bo Mac and Jose Benavidez Sr. They are actually doing the same thing in which they actually have some exceptional fighters. They have some fighters that might be skilled or, you know, might be more skilled than, you know, the average guy that they're going to actually match make them with. But when the stars align, and you actually have to make adjustments. Go back. You have to retool. Go back to the drum board. Come back with another game plan. He's failing. Tell me I'm lying. 
anyways man it was a tough one man he didn't you know ryo didn't pass adversity university but it happens i think he can learn a lot from that i think he not that i would actually ever tell a man to actually be humble because that had that means having a low value of self-worth but i would actually say man it did cause a level of humility you can see it when the referee actually you know stopped the fight there was no contesting he hugs the ref he looked relieved and it was a little shaky you know what i'm saying a little shaky business with how the ref was actually refing that fight and it, it actually really was looking like man they was really trying to set buddy up but the skills that buddy had de los santos he actually was able to get ryu and put his name up in lights what you think how do you feel do we put jose benavidez in the high seat my vote is yes anyway stay tuned man i think that uh you know david is the hype job that's waiting to get exposed i stand firm on that i'm not going to switch until i see something otherwise in the ring or outside the ring or i hear something from jose benavidez senior letting me know that they can actually make adjustments and he's actually coaching he just don't have people that's already more gifted than the average fighter that they're going to be match made with thanks for the likes thanks for the comments thanks for the subscriptions thanks for all the feedback and um i started to see man when it comes to this debating stuff and you know talking boxing man nobody don't really want no smoke nobody want no smoke anyway that's it that's all here at body work boxing but we don't take things for face value we do that body work. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? My words, I do what I do. He knows what I'm about to tell him right now. It's Mr. Keep running your mouth. That's what I do. I just feel like I'm the champ. In the day, I'm just, a, I'm just a fighting no focus. It doesn't matter. Inside, outside, I can just fight. So I just feel like if you if you get down to the wire, and we gotta lock it up. I'm out on top. Right now, I know that's dangerous. I actually see how I'm looking. I stay solid. I'm always solid. I stay fucked up. Right now, I'm just trying to get this shit done. Thank you.